Welcome to the Parents Place of Maryland and Family Voices series, The Nuts and Bolts of Telemedicine. This is a four part webinar series and today we're gonna to be talking about, are you connected? In the first webinar in this series, we will discuss some things that will be essential for family-centered telemedicine experience. Let's get started. PPMD's mission is to empower families as advocates and partners in improving education and healthcare outcomes for children with disabilities and special health care needs. We are Maryland's Parent Training and Information Center, Family to Family Health Information Center, as well as the state affiliate of Family Voices. We are mostly funded through federal and state grants and have been in operation for over 30 years. We are a family founded and run organization and we assist families to navigate the education and healthcare systems. We do this by providing one-on-one -on -one assistance to families, information and resources for families and providers, workshops and trainings for families and providers statewide, parent leadership development, and we work and advocate to promote systems change to improve services for families of children and youth with special health care needs and disabilities. It is PPMD's role to help families to better understand their child's disabilities, education, and health care needs communicate more effectively with schools, doctors, related professionals and agencies, understand their rights and responsibilities under special education law and regulations and in healthcare systems, obtain appropriate services for their children, resolve disagreements with the school or other agencies and connect with other community resources. First, we would like to start off with a statement from our funders. This program is sponsored by the Health Resources and Services Administration, HRSA, of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, as part, so HHS, as part of an award totaling a million dollars with 0% financing with non-governmental sources. The content are those of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official view of, nor an endorsement by HRSA, HHS, or the US government. For more information, please visit hersa.gov. Let's start with a quote. In an age where the average consumer manages nearly all aspects of life online, it's a no brainer that healthcare should be just as convenient, accessible and safe as online banking. Here's an overview of what we'll be talking about today in this Are You Connected webinar. If you're confused about the term telemedicine, telehealth, and all the other telewhats, we will clarify those today for you. We're gonna talk about the FAB Four, which are the four topics for our webinar series and the four essentials for family-centered telemedicine experiences. We're gonna define what being connected actually means. And we'll talk about words like data, cellular, broadband, internet, and alternative ways to connect. If you already have a connection, we're gonna talk about what ways you can test your connection and enhance your connection to make it strong and better. Here are a couple of learning object objectives um, that we hope that you will um, come to by the end of this webinar. We hope you'll be able to, one, determine if you're connected for a telemedicine appointment and be able to answer yes or no to that question. Two, identify two options for getting connected if you're not connected already. Three, Determine, excuse me, demonstrate one way to test connection and one way to improve connection if you are connected. So let's get started with some of those definitions and clarify the tele what and digital what of the telemedicine landscape. Telemedicine is often used interchangeably with telehealth, but is technically focused on the clinical aspect of care, such as a video appointment with your child's pediatrician or virtual therapy session with your young adult speech therapist. These are both examples of telemedicine. 
telehealth is the use of electronic information and telecommunication technologies to support long distance clinical health care, patient and professional health related education, public health and health administration. And the technologies for telehealth include video conferencing, the internet, store and forward imaging, streaming media, media, excuse me, terrestrial and wireless communications. In terms of digital and connected health, that is the use of digital, mobile, wearable, or other innovative technologies that facilitate the tracking and monitoring of health status and behavior outside of that clinical interaction. So with the goal of fostering more patient-centered, technology-enabled, and insight-driven healthcare. So as we already shared, our four webinars we're, we're referring to as the Fab Four. Today we're doing, are you connected? The second webinar is, do you have a device? The third webinar is, can you see your provider? And the fourth webinar is your first your family's first telemedicine appointment. So we'll be offering all of these um, webinars to you. So what does being connected mean? Being connected is the ability to send and receive data through space. Data can be a lot of different things. For instance, you can make a phone call and your voice is is, is data being transmitted on a phone line or through a mobile service through the air. You can send text messages and that is data. The letters that, that make the words are data. They can be represented by two dots because it takes a little bit more data to send a text message. Then I'm gonna go to the next slide so I can illustrate that. So we've already talked about your voice in a phone call. You see that one dot, text message, two dots sending an email, that might be a little bit more dots, right? Posting a photo on social media, that takes up quite a bit more data because a photo has a lot more data embedded into it to make up the picture. So you see a little bit of pile of dots there to represent the photo data. Then we can come to a video call or telemedicine appointment with your child's doctor. You can see that takes a lot of data, which is, a, which is represented by a large pile of orange dots because it involves not only my voice, but also video, possibly pictures. And so it takes quite a bit more data. Let's define what being connected actually means. So here we have the two circles with the two houses in it. Let's imagine my house is on the left and your house is on the right. Being connected means that you have the ability to send and receive data, which we are going to represent with this orange dot through space. This arrow means I might be sending you an email and you might reply to my email with this arrow on the bottom. When you look at it in the data form, it really just is really just sending data through space, whether that be through a wire or wirelessly. We will get into those terms in a bit. So just be patient. I know this is, there's a lot of information that's being thrown your way. So how is data measured? Data is measured by dots that we've been showing, but in real life, data is measured with the word bit. So a bit with little b is a small unit of data. And when you talk about it, in time, it could be used to measure speed to connect or maintain the connection. So eight of these bits make a byte. But for right now, we're just gonna talk about the bits. Shopping around for internet, you've probably noticed that plan speeds are measured in MBPS. But what are MBPS and how many do you need? MBPS stands for megabits per second. A bit is a tiny piece of data, and a megabit is many, many tiny pieces of data. Not to be confused with megabytes. Megabits are what is used to measure your download speed. The higher the number of megabits, the faster your internet will be. 
So, how many megabits per second do you need? Checking emails and browsing the internet usually uses only a small amount of data. A little more data is needed for apps like FaceTime or Skype. If you stream TV shows, download big movie files, or watch live sport, you'll be using a whole lot more data. And if everyone in the house is internet streaming, gaming, and everything in between, you're going to need more megabits per second to keep everyone connected at the same time. So, how much? Well, that depends on you. Our Experience NBN 50 plan is great for families and households with two or more people streaming movies, music, video, gaming, and heavy downloads at the same time. To see more and get the best value plan for you, head to the broadband plans area of the Origin website. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the um, megabits, um, megabytes as we move through the presentation. Um, but we'd like to get back to how much in just a sec, we're going to talk about that in just a second, but we want to look at this, um, this flow chart. So this flow chart helps us to under, to answer the question, are you connected? You can start there in the box where it says, do I have a cell phone? Oops, excuse me. Let me go back. Um, if you have a cell phone and answer yes or no, we're going to talk more about these two types of connections in a moment, cellular and internet. Once you decide if you have a cell phone, you answer the question, do you have a cellular service or do you have internet at home? Then follow it from there. We'll talk a little bit more about those speeds and how to enhance those bits a little later in the webinar. So let's talk about the two main types of connections we've mentioned, cellular or mobile connections. And then the second type of main connection is internet or broadband. And I know you all have heard those terms before. So let's dive into cellular with this video. Cellular and mobile are words that are helpful to know when you're talking about cellular connections. <laughs> In its most basic form, a mobile phone is like a walkie-talkie, using radio technology to transmit and receive a signal. But unlike a walkie-talkie, phones don't connect directly with each other. If they did, there wouldn't be enough frequencies available and the signals would clash. So a mobile phone network is comprised of a series of cells, with a receiving mast in each, hence the American term, cell phones. When you speak into a mobile phone, a microphone turns your voice into an electric signal. This signal is turned into radio waves by a transmitter, which beams those waves to the nearest mast. The mast receives the signal and sends it on through the network's infrastructure until it reaches the mast nearest the person you're calling. From there, it's a short transmission to your friend's phone. In this fashion, the whole range of radio frequencies is available in each cell, meaning that multiple people can use the same frequency in many cells. But the frequencies are finite. If you have a large number of people using their phones all at once in a single cell, the network in that cell can become blocked. That's why it's very difficult to make a call at midnight on New Year's Eve. Right, and we're back. Oh, we've already seen that. Oops, sorry about that, you all. So data, which is just the small piece of information that is sent through the wire or space is represented here by those dots. A data plan, this is the service offered by a cell phone carrier or mobile carriers that offer users the access to 4G or 5G. They can charge for amount of data or dots sent and received. So we talk about minutes. You may hear minutes referred to as pay-as-you-go services for a specific amount of time for cellular phone service. 4G or 5G that we mentioned on the previous slide are as follows. 4G is the current standard of cellular networks. It stands for fourth generation and 5G is the fifth generation and in newest generation of cellular network technology. And it is beginning to be rolled out in 2021. Let's talk about the terms internet and broadband. 
Watch this video to understand those a little bit better. Broadband is a name for the high-speed internet service made available through an internet service provider, typically your telephone or cable company. Access to the world through broadband helps to allow local governments, educational institutions, 911 and emergency services, tribal communities, private businesses, and citizens to create and disseminate information, education, literature, forms, policies, and business at a rate of speed and level that could not otherwise be achieved. Broadband, once considered a convenience, is now becoming an essential medium for delivering all these services. Broadband access is different from dial-up access. To connect using dial-up, your computer makes a call on your phone line to connect you to your internet service provider. The dial-up internet connection is good for only as long as the call lasts. Hey, can I use the phone now? Broadband connections, however, are typically on all the time and are much faster than dial-up. Many of today's internet activities and opportunities require a broadband connection. High-speed internet allows large amounts of information, data, to move quickly over the World Wide Web for a reliable, seamless, real-time experience. In general, broadband refers to telecommunication where a wide band of frequencies is available to transmit information. Broadband is often measured in terms of bits per second. Typically, you see either kilobits per second or megabits per second, describing the speed of a broadband connection. If you watch a movie online, from Netflix for instance, you need to have a line of at least 700 kilobits per second. If you make a Skype video call on your computer, you need a connection of at least 1.2 megabits per second. And if you want a higher quality picture from Netflix, like what you get from a DVD, Netflix must send you data at a much higher rate, about three and a half times the minimum Netflix speed. But maybe you have just a dial-up connection. A common dial-up connection is just 56 kilobits per second. How do people access broadband? People get broadband internet access by a number of methods, but typically they have either wired or wireless service. In wired service, you get an internet connection through cable lines or telephone lines. Wireless service, becoming increasingly popular, includes fixed wireless and mobile and cellular wireless. Fixed wireless usually means that you receive your signal over the air, but to a fixed location, such as an antenna mounted on your roof. Mobile or cellular wireless usually refers to cellular phones or other handheld devices that are by definition, well, mobile, and can travel easily from place to place. Broadband is about connecting businesses to customers down the street and around the world. Broadband is about connecting doctors to patients, helping to drive down costs and improve access to health care. Broadband is about connecting teachers and students 
to the latest information to expand learning and assist in quality education, no matter where they live. Broadband is about emergency responders receiving instant information and providing a new way for the public to call for help in the future. And broadband is about connecting families, whether it's across the country or across the world. So let's define modem and dial-up. So you heard in the video, you know, a modem is a device that enables a computer to send and receive information over a normal telephone line. And you saw that in the video with the dial-up connection. And then dial-up is just the connection from your computer that goes through a regular telephone line to connect you to the internet. So we also need to define what a hotspot are, is and Wi-Fi. So a hotspot, these are places where the wireless internet connection is available. Excuse me. For example, a coffee shop can be a hotspot where you can go and connect to a wireless internet connection that is housed there. Wi-Fi connects computers, cell phones, laptops, and other devices to the internet without a cable. So they are wirelessly connected. So what if I'm not connected, right? You might be asking yourself um, this question. What if I can't send you an email or what if I'm not able to have a telemedicine appointment with my provider? So here's some options for getting connected in the community. Community center, so one option would be to drive or visit a community center near um, your location that might have wireless internet. Um, many fast food restaurants offer Wi-Fi with the purchase of a meal or food, so you can be um, in a place that has internet access as well. A cultural liaison hub or cultural center, um, these might also be places to find access. Almost all libraries have access to internet and some even have private rooms that could be reserved to have a quiet spot away from those who are reading and studying. There are gathering places that might be available in your community such as a chapter house or general store might also be space, a place, excuse me, with active hotspots or allow their visitors to access the internet. Um, we already talked about um, the coffee shops. Um, family Voices offices or other community providers. So right now, PPMD, which we said is the is the Maryland Family to Family affiliate organization, we are technically um, closed and working from home as this is being recorded. Um, but that might also be a place when we reopen. Um, as I said, we already mentioned the coffee shops and the fast food restaurants, as well as um, the schools. The schools might be a place that offer a place for um, connection um, when it's in session. Additionally, I wanted to mention um, Lifeline, um, which is not a physical place to connect to the internet, but it's a means to help finance and pay for internet services. So if there's a concern for your family and a barrier for you not being able to have internet at home or at another place, Lifeline is a federal program and we have some information and resources on how to access that. So you can definitely reach out to um, our parent educators and they can help you um, get the information you need on Lifeline. So we're gonna talk about um, how you can test um, your connection. So how fast can, your, can you download or upload data is the speed of your connection. In order to do this, we will first need to establish our connection. So we would use our cell phone or laptop or device that we would connect to the internet. We'll open up a web browser, such as Chrome, Safari, or Firefox. And then we could just type in this website. Um, so we would just be going to a website or our phones, or we would just be going to a website on a phone, smartphone, or device. And we would type in fast, Dot com.
So what we would come up on the screen would look something like this with the number and you could see the, mega, the megabits per second um, that we've talked about. And this is a speed of your connection. If you're doing it on your cell phone, it might look a little different and it might have a different number, possibly lower. But these show you an example of what, you're, what you'll see. Let's go back to that flow chart and see what these numbers actually mean. So on the top and the, and the buttons, um, excuse me, the button circles here, you can see that once you've established connection, whether that be cell cellular on the bottom, internet on the top, there's a number saying that two boxes with a number greater than 15 megabits per second and less than 15 megabits per second. This is the number that comes off of the screen when you, go, when you do the fast.com. So that was the slide before. If it's greater than 15 megabits per second, it's considered a fast connection and it's considered applicable for accessing telemedicine. Under 15 megabits per second, you may still be able to have your telemedicine appointment, but it might be a little bit on the slow side where it might not be the most ideal connection. However, you may still be able to do it under 15 megabits per second. That doesn't preclude you, um, but those are just some of the general guidelines, okay? So just, so, you know, when you're looking at the flow chart and you go to fast.com, take a look at that number because that number is gonna help you figure out, you know, if your internet may be too slow and you might have to, um, access some of those community resources. So what happens, you already have your connection, but it's going in and out, or it's not a strong connection. Let's talk about some ways to enhance your connection so that you can get a stronger signal that will lead to a better telemedicine experience for you and your family. So the first two things we wanna talk about is wired versus wireless. Wired is as it sounds. It is literally having your com computer connected with a wire to the internet. This will give you the strongest signal possible and will be stronger most of the time than wireless. A wireless signal, as we mentioned before, has to travel through space and so sometimes it can be weaker than connecting physically with the wire. So if you have this option for your telemedicine appointment of wired versus wired, wireless, excuse me, Wired would be the choice to make for the strongest and best connect connection. Now let's talk about windows versus walls. This is particularly important for mobile connections or cellular connections. You are oftentimes getting a stronger signal when you're standing by a window or even when you're outside. When using cellular, you can get more bars, which shows the strength of the signal versus when you might be taking a call or doing the telemedicine appointment from your basement. Walls can provide a barrier to cellular and Wi-Fi signals. And so your signal may be weaker if you're doing that call from the basement. If you have the choice when you're doing your telemedicine appointment, try to be in a place where there are few walls and try to be near a window or even outside if it's not too windy or noisy where you are. So before we end, we really want to know, we know this is a lot of information, but we really want to get your feedback um, on this um, webinar. There is a QR code that you can literally hold up your phone right now, if you'd like. Um, open up your camera if camera, um, and, and, and hold it up to the screen, and that will take you directly to the evaluation. We also, when you're accessing this on YouTube, there is going to also be a link to um, the evaluation on the YouTube page. You can access it that way as well. So thank you um, for spending your time. We, again, we know it's a lot of information to get through, um, but we really appreciate you joining us um, for our first webinar series please check our entire series. In our next webinar, we will discuss, do you have a device? Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, this has been Yetta Myrick, Health Information and Communication Specialist 
at the Parents Place of Maryland. Please email me at yetta at ppmd.org if you have any questions. Thank you and be well.